Hey there! Today we are cooking with butter and sugar, flour and oatmeal, salt, baking powder, and maybe raisins. On this episode of What Do You Make of This? I'm going to teach you how to make, quite possibly, the world's easiest oatmeal cookies. So picture this. You're relaxing at home for the night. Suddenly, the craving for dessert hits. You could reach for a package of cookies, and I wouldn't blame you. I do it all the time. But what if I told you you could make fresh from the oven oatmeal cookies using six ingredients and one bowl in 15 minutes? Let me show you how. So the first thing we're going to start with is some butter. I've got a quarter cup of butter here, and that's going to go straight into the bowl. If I can get the butter off the spoon. There we go. <laughs> to the butter, we're going to add brown sugar. You could substitute in white sugar, but brown sugar has a little more flavor because it's got molasses and I prefer it in these cookies. So quarter cup of brown sugar also going in the bowl. I can never decide if I want to use a fork or a spoon when I'm making cookies. I usually use both. So I'm going to start with a fork, but I might change my mind halfway through. So first thing I'm going to do is just start mixing together this butter and sugar. We're basically creaming, but for this recipe, it's so easy, and that's what I love about it, that you don't have to bust out the electric mixers, stand mixers, egg beaters, anything like that. I just kind of work the butter and the sugar together using a fork until it's all pretty much the same color. So this part takes a second. I'll try not to move the bowl around too much so you can see what's happening here. You don't even need a bowl this big, by the way. I'm just using a glass bowl so you can see what's happening. But this recipe will basically make six cookies, which is perfect for just, you know, a couple of cookies each on a weeknight. Um, so very often I will just do it in like a big cereal bowl and it takes up less space in my dishwasher and it's just win-win. It's honestly one of the things that drives me crazy about baking is just how many dishes I seem to use and how much mess I seem to make. And if you're in the same boat as me where you just think, oh man, I'm gonna destroy the kitchen if I bake something right now, this is the recipe for you. Like I said, six ingredients, one bowl, the cleanup is a snap. I've just got all of these little ingredients separated so that you can see them, but very often I will just measure straight into the bowl and it's just less things to wash. Okay, so while I talked about that, this has now come together very nicely. And as you can see, it's basically all one nice even color. Okay. So to that, I am going to go in, here it is, with a quarter cup of all-purpose flour. I have never tried this recipe with alternate flours, but it's such a simple recipe. Feel free to experiment, give it a try. If you're looking for something gluten-free, substitute it in. If you're looking for something low carb, maybe try some almond flour. I can't promise you'll get great results, but I would love it if you tried it and commented down below. Let me know what works and we can kind of share as a community, figure out some alternate versions for these cookies. But for tonight, we're just going to use some all-purpose flour. And same thing, I'm just going to work that in there just because we're not really going to mix this to death. So I find if you mix at each stage, it just helps the cookies to come together a little more quickly. So once the flour is pretty much worked in and it's no longer sticking to the bowl, that's looking pretty good. We are going to go in with a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. And this is going to be what gives the cookies just a little bit of puff. It's so little baking powder, it's actually stuck to the bottom of the bowl here. <laughs> there we go. Let me just dry off my hands. There. And once again, just going to mix that part in. And actually, while I'm doing it, I'm going to go in with the salt too. One little pinch of salt is all you need. Don't leave that out though. You actually need a little bit of salt in any kind of sweet thing you make it helps sweet food taste sweeter. You don't need a lot of salt, but just that little tiny pinch will just do something to help your palate pick up on the sugar that's in the cookies and it will make them taste sweeter. So I used to leave it out and then I learned that. Now I've never gone back because it's true. Once I tried it, I thought, oh, yep, that does make them just a little bit sweeter. Okay, so the last thing you have to add to your oatmeal cookies is obviously oatmeal. So to this little bit of batter, we're going to go in with half a cup of oatmeal I have tried this with all different kinds of oats, instant oats, rolled oats, whatever, throw it in. Sometimes you get slightly different results. Maybe the oats come out a little bit crunchier, but honestly, I have yet to try some type of oat and not liked the way the cookie came out. The texture will change each time, but I've never been disappointed. So use what's in your cupboard right now. It'll be fine. 
So same thing, I'm going to just work this in. This fork is working pretty well for me tonight. Usually around this point, I start to switch to a spoon, but I don't even know if I'm going to need it. Sometimes the spoon just cuts through better. Maybe it's just got something to do with how soft the butter is, because some nights I'm really impatient and the butter is still ice cold from the fridge. <laughs> so <laughs> it takes a little more effort, but I had the foresight to let the butter soften a little bit today. But really, I mean, this, these are impulse cookies at their finest. I have just thrown it together at the last minute, deciding something from a package was not good enough for me. Because really, I love something that is just fresh and warm and gooey from the oven. Who doesn't? Okay, so this right here is the basis of our oatmeal cookie recipe. Now, oatmeal cookies have kind of a dividing issue and that issue is raisins. So if you ask me, raisins have no place in my oatmeal cookies. I don't like them. I don't want them in the cookies. On their own, they're fine, I'll eat raisins. I just don't like them in cookies. And I've found out the more people I've talked to, we seem to be about 50-50. You either love raisins in your cookies or you hate them. So I'm going to please everybody today, and what I'm going to do is make half of a batch without raisins, and then we'll throw some raisins into the other half, and now everybody wins. So, to divide up these cookies, I'm just going to smash them flat in the bowl, rotate the bowl a little bit here, just to make sure it's even, nobody fights over who gets more, and I'm just going to use my fork and make a line straight down the middle. Now, like I had mentioned, this will make six oatmeal cookies. So I'm just going to divide one half into thirds. And that is going to be the first half of these cookies. Maybe get that little bit of cookie dough off my fingers. What's the other cool thing about this is there's no eggs in this. So, you know, if you're a fan of cookie dough, go nuts. Okay, I'm gonna just get that dough off my fingers and just rotate for a minute this bowl and a pan. So you don't have to go crazy greasing your pan because there's a lot of butter in this recipe already. By the way, if you don't want to use butter, margarine, shortening, anything like that works just fine too. I'm just a big fan of butter. It gives a little more flavor. Anyway, um, because of the oil that's in the cookies, you don't have to really grease this, but just to make cleanup a little bit easier because this is a fast cookie, I like to line it with parchment or foil or something like that because then you just throw it away when you're done with the cookies. Okay. So I am going to take the first sixth of this batter and just make a quick cookie. Now you don't wanna fool around with this too much because the heat from your hands is going to melt the butter and that can make your cookies go a little flatter in the oven than you might like them to. So working fairly quickly here, I'm just going to do three balls. And if one is way bigger than the other, which that one is, you just take a little from one, put it onto one that looks a little bit smaller just kind of fiddle around with it quickly until they feel about even. That's pretty good. Okay, I'm going to switch this back. So we'll put that back up there, bring back this bowl, and then to the other half for all of you raisin lovers out there, we're going to put in some raisins. I don't even honestly know how many raisins. That's probably about two tables, you know, two tablespoons. <laughs> And at this point, it's a lot easier to work them in if you just use your hands. And by the way, if you don't want raisins, but you want something in your oatmeal cookies, you can do any kind of chopped nut. You can do some chocolate chips, put some sprinkles on top. They're your cookies. You mix in whatever you want. I personally like them very plain when I make them. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of fold them in a little bit, which basically just means squishing and flipping until all of the uh, raisins are worked in. That looks pretty good. It's kind of a crumbly dough, so it can be a little bit hard to get the raisins stuck in there, but just keep working at it. Commit until you get what you want. Okay, that looks pretty good. A few more raisins trying to run away. I'm just going to poke them in there. Like I said, this is a very informal baking recipe, so <laughs> you don't have to be super precise about things. You might even just poke the raisins in at the very end once you've already made your cookie balls. Okay, so same thing as before. I'm just going to try to loosely break this into thirds. That looks pretty good. We might have to mess with it a little bit. Move that bowl back over, bring back our cookie tray. And then I'm just going to pick up some of those stray raisins and just try to work this into another bowl. So here again, the raisins have come out. Get in there raisins. Today is your day to shine. Get in those cookies. Okay. We'll do another ball. And yeah, this one too feels pretty gigantic. So I'm gonna have to 
move some things around. You can just tell when you're making them because you're, you're using your hands and that's why I like to use my hands for this. One will definitely feel bigger than the other and that's when you just kind of break them apart until they feel about even. Again, it's not rocket science, it's really simple. You just work with it until you get what you like. And then because I'm using butter, they will spread out quite a lot. So I just like to get a little bit of a head start and just flatten them out. And it will just help to make sure that as they bake and spread, they'll spread a little more evenly. Sometimes they run into each other. Once in a while I get like a giant sheet pan of cookie and then I just eat the whole sheet pan of cookie. I'm not gonna lie to you, it's delicious. <laughs> I'm not gonna judge you if you do the same thing. You know, it's, it's oatmeal, it's practically good for you, right? Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to get my hands wiped up. So what's going to happen here is these cookies are going to go into a 350 degree oven for somewhere between eight and 10 minutes. You're just looking for them to get a little bit golden brown on the edges and on the bottom. Don't take it too far, but really it's a matter of how you like your cookies. After eight to 10 minutes, we'll let them cool a little bit and we'll get them off the pan. I'll see you on the other side. All right, it is cookie time. So I let mine go for about 10 minutes. And as you can see, they're perfectly imperfect. Each one is a little bit different. They're all going to be delicious. Now, what I love about the butter and brown sugar in this recipe is they actually kind of caramelize around the edges as they cook. But as you can see, if you flip it over, they're perfectly brown on the bottom. They're not burnt. They really do just come out pretty much perfect every single time I make them. So. They're actually cool enough to handle now. I don't even know if I need that spatula. I'm just going to get them off the pan and arrange them on the plate however I think looks nice. Just maybe stagger around a little bit of raisin, a little bit of plain. That way everybody can reach for what they want. Honestly, even though I don't like them in my cookies, the raisin ones do look really nice. So maybe we'll put that one on the top. There we go. And just like that, you've got a nice warm pile of cookies. The only thing that's missing is a glass of milk. And that's it. With six ingredients in about 15 minutes, you can have fresh, warm cookies anytime. As always, this recipe can be found in the description below. Please like and subscribe for more videos. I'm Jessica. Thanks for watching.